Hi guys, welcome back to CJ's Keto Kitchen. Tonight is the third recipe in our Thanksgiving recipe series, and this one is going to be a breakfast recipe. It's going to be very easy. It is keto breakfast casserole. So come along with me and let's get started. our first step we need to do two things we need to preheat our oven to 350 degrees our next step is you are going to need a 9 by 13 inch casserole dish of some kind and I have sprayed mine with avocado oil spray you could use butter or lard anything that's going to help coat your pan so that when our casserole is done cooking, it is going to be easily removed and cut into slices. Our next step is we need to brown some breakfast sausage, and you can use any kind that you would like. I happen to have some from Falls Brand here. The macros on Falls Brand is very good. Um, this is about a pound and a half. You can just use a pound. This one has to be a, it happens to be a pound and a half because that's how they do their meat ratios. But I'm going to put this in our frying pan and get this browning because it is going to be the bottom layer of our breakfast casserole. Next, I'm going to be adding three quarters of a cup of bacon crumbles. And these are already pre-cooked and three quarters of a cup is equivalent to 12 slices so if you wanted to use 12 slices of bacon you absolutely could do this and because these are pre-cooked I am just warming them in with our sausage I drained my sausage a little bit but left enough of the oil to assist in breaking down our bacon crumble I'm going to add a little bit of seasoning at this point. I'm going to put in just a little bit of poultry seasoning, mainly because of the sage. And sage is generally found in sausage. And we want to make sure that we have good sausage flavor in here. Because the eggs are, of course, very neutral. And so we want to make sure our meat is very well seasoned. I'm also going to put a little bit of salt-free seasoning. This is just a generic uh, herbal seasoning. It just has things like garlic and a little minced onion and just a tiny bit of red pepper flake. So I'm just gonna sprinkle some of that on just to give us a little bit more seasoning. I'm going to turn off the heat at this point and just let our meats rest while we prepare the rest of our casserole. These green onions, just one bunch, and this is going to be our garnish. And I'm using this as a garnish just in case whoever you are going to be serving this breakfast casserole to it might be children. In our case, there will be children involved, and maybe green onions or onions of any kind aren't a garnish that they would naturally want to use. So I'm going to be using these as a garnish on top of our breakfast casserole instead of putting it inside. So you're going to need a dozen eggs, that's 12 eggs for this casserole. It is of course in a 9 by 13 inch pan so it's quite a bit of eggs and it does serve a lot of people so you do want an entire dozen eggs. I'm going to do this process in my blender because I find that it gives me um, a little bit more um, fluffiness to my eggs if they're very well whipped. If you don't want to use your blender, you absolutely don't have to. You could just whisk them in a large bowl. So I'm just going to start cracking the 12 eggs into my blender. So 
So I'm going to add a couple of ingredients to our dozen eggs. The first thing being some hot sauce. This is not really going to make your dish hot. It is just going to give it a, some additional flavor. I'm going to be using Frank's Red Hot. You could use Tabasco or something else that your family prefers. Um, anything that you would like. I'm going to put in two tablespoons. I also want three quarters of a cup of heavy cream. I'm also going to add some pink Himalayan sea salt. This will be our opportunity to salt our eggs. So we want to make sure that they are flavorful and of course add salt to your taste. And then I am just going to blend. The only other thing that we are going to need, we have our, our um, blended up egg mixture. We want two cups of cheese. I'm going to put half of the cheese on top of the meat when I lay the meat down, and then we will put the other cup on top. So that's one cup in the middle and one cup on top. And you can use any kind of cheese you want. I have cheddar here. Okay, so once again, we have our nine by 13 inch casserole and it has been sprayed. Mine has been sprayed with avocado oil and we have our preheated 350 degree oven. So I'm going to take our sausage and our bacon and put it in the bottom of our casserole dish. I just want to spread that around evenly. so that each piece of our casserole will have meat. Now I'm going to take half of this cheese and sprinkle it over the meat. Now I'm going to take our egg mixture and slowly pour it over our meat. Now I'm going to take our remaining cheese and sprinkle over. Okay, so this is going to go into our oven, set at 350 for about 35 to 40 minutes. It all depends on your oven. So I'm going to start at 35 and work up from there. Okay, it's been in for 35 minutes and it's time to come out. Looks beautiful. We're gonna let it sit and cool for about 10 to 15 minutes and then I'll cut it into slices and garnish with our onion and we'll let CJ have a taste. I'm going to slice this now and serve it and I have the green onions, the scallions that we chopped earlier and I'm just going to put this on per piece. If your family liked green onions, you could just go ahead and sprinkle it all over the casserole but this way I'm just doing it per piece and you could also do that per piece if you were taking it somewhere and you didn't know who liked onions and who didn't like onions. So. That's what I'm going to do now. And 
I'm just making sure that the cheese is away from the edge so when I go to cut it, we don't have sticking. First, the first piece is always the most difficult to get out, but I'm going to do my best. Okay, so there she is, and you can see all the meat and cheese inside the casserole. So I've put that on the plate, and then I'm just going to take my green onions and just sprinkle that on. So there we go. There's our keto breakfast casserole. Hi, CJ. Hi. It's time for dinner. It's breakfast for dinner. Yep. So this is a keto breakfast casserole. Yep. All right. It's good. Let's add a little bit of It's real good. I like it with the uh, I know you told people that the onions were optional. Mm -hmm. You kind of just did it piece by piece versus putting it in the Right, just the in dish. case you're serving children or people yeah. who don't like onions. I like it with the onions. And um, I'm surprised. I don't really taste the hot sauce. I know you said you put... So it's not hot. Yeah. I know you said you put two tablespoons in, I think. And I don't I don't taste anything, but but you also said that I I used to eat a lot of cayenne. Your cayenne tolerance. So I don't, tolerance. I don't really taste any spice at all. Okay. Uh, I mean, as far as heat right. and, you know, being concerned about if you gave it to a kid. Right. You know, them saying, it's too hot, it's too hot. Right. It's it's fine. Okay. I think it's fine. So it's good. A lot of flavor. And because it's a casserole, I'm sure it'll probably get better tomorrow yes. or the longer it sits. And it's a template. I mean, you could do whatever you want. You could add more yeah. vegetables, mushrooms, peppers, yeah. whatever you like. Different and this types is, of meat. This is not necessarily just a keto recipe. No. I think during the video you said something about it could also be considered carnivore. Definitely. That's, if you just, didn't use the onions. Yeah, it's just I mean, eggs, you could leave cheese. out the hot sauce if you were super strict. But yeah, yeah it's all carnivore foods. So yeah, definitely. so not necessarily just a keto recipe. Right. So you could you could serve this to anybody. And and it's good for food prep too because you could cut this into squares and freeze it and it would yeah. be ready to go. Yeah. Individual I mean, servings. we made it specifically for this Thanksgiving mm -hmm. series, but... It'd be great any time, and I think we could probably make this some other time. Oh, definitely. And just, like I said, just for fruit prep and have it ready yeah. to, to eat throughout the week sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, I think it's good. I think people will like it. Good texture. I'm sure it'll get better tomorrow. And, um, yeah, I think it's a winner. Good job, baby. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So, come on back and see us again. If you need any information about this recipe, also macros, full printable recipes. Those are found on our blog and that is cjsketokitchen.com. Also, we have a Thanksgiving playlist, a holiday playlist that includes all of the recipes that we are currently doing and also the recipes that we have done in the previous years that incorporate keeping with the ketogenic lifestyle during the holiday festivities. So go ahead and check those out. Those are also on cjsketokitchen.com. We are also on social media. We are on Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and sometimes we release teaser recipes and also photographs of foods that we are currently eating and ones that we've made in the past or that we are going to be making shortly. So definitely check us out there and that is also CJ's Keto Kitchen. So we hope to see you again next time and we'll see you then. Bye.